coming in the Blues Cove, the old railway uh, embankment. Coming up Orangedale, the old railway station. So the railway went by here and sort of left the, the uh, West Bay area out of it. It's a pretty little spot. At Orangedale, uh, there's a fair bit of wetland in the uh, landward of the railway bridge, and um, and there's a wharf and anchorage uh, just in Blues Cove. Um, fairly. Sh Fairly shallow uh, waters and uh, grassed uh, yards all along the edge of uh, at the head. Heading out of Blues Cove, uh, we won't go up the little McDonald Cove. Uh, we'll go by Martin's Island and head along the other side of the North Basin. Heading uh, towards Gillis Cove, a uh, very small embayment. Uh, this is the site of the Gillis Cove Oyster Research Station where they get the spat for oyster cages. This is, used to be an old fisheries uh, research uh, station. You know, the Eskasoni Indian Band uh, looks after things. As you can see, uh, it's uh, sort of stagnant waters up at this end of the uh, Gillis Cove, up by the road. And uh, you see the oyster cages in the water. Flying along the west side of Gillis Cove, you can see the uh, oyster spat uh, facilities and uh, fairly regular shore on this side and a low cusp bait uh, spit at the mouth of Gillis Cove. Uh, but a little bit deeper water uh, just in there and then we'll f head eastward along the north shore of North Basin. Very little fringing beach to begin with. Treed right down the shoreline, however, the fringing beach does pick up and get a little bit wider as you head towards Morrison's Cove, and it appears to be more of an erosional scarp in the back shore. There you can see the sand deposits picking up now. Morrison's Cove. Just entering the uh, the boom, the channel between uh, uh, Boom Island and the uh, West Alba Shore, as you can see along here. Uh, it's a fairly uh, narrow channel. The shores are partially uh, stabilized uh, 
a reddish brown tills. Um, time is 2.18. The beaches are almost non-existent, although there's sand in the near shore with a narrow apron of uh, shallow water, which tends to get a little bit wider in places. towards um, the uh, mouth of the boom in Cranberry Island. Uh, you see some of these sandy areas have dune grass in the back shore, sandy foreshores. Uh, but again, it's not very well developed beaches in these inner uh, waters. We're going by uh, a very small unnamed island with a, a bit of a, a spit off uh, beach corner of it see here mostly sandy and then we're coming up on Cranberry Island which has a fairly large wetland on the south side um, you can see dune grass along the barrier uh, there's a partial inlet outlet uh, through it to the wetland area as we come around the corner uh, you can see the shallow water that extends off from the island coming around this corner again there's a shoal just uh, ringing the edge of the island and uh, we'll proceed back up into um, Portage Creek area and towards Castles Cove and Martin Cove. We're uh, just looking at several coves uh, in the background there, including Martin Cove and White Cove and Crooked Cove. And the shore as we head towards um, Castles Cove has some wetland vegetation, discontinuous beach, and at the mouth of uh, Castles Cove there's quite a low-lying uh, island just in the foreground here with a bit of a fringing beach with dune grass in the back. Um, you see some of the, the seabed uh, in the picture so it's not that deep, but as you head towards Piper's Cove you get a little bit better fringing beach, uh, wetland, and a little bit more relief right at the shoreline, maybe some more erosional uh, scarp. And you can just see the, uh, the presence of the railway, the gap in the trees as we head towards the crossing at Portage Creek. We're just covering the, the railway bridge at uh, Portage Creek. Portage Creek used to be an area where there was uh, oyster spats in the 1970s. Don't know how active any of that is now. You can see most of the shores along here as we cut across. And most of the waters up in this uh, area, Portage Creek, are very shallow. Uh, there's vegetation in the, in the uh, subtitle area. And uh, most of the shores are uh, vegetated either with the grasses or trees. Um, very uh, tranquil waters, uh, sort of stagnant waters almost. A lot of old uh, tree uh, stumps and stuff in the water. And then we circle at the head of Portage Creek. The time is... Uh, 2.22 or 14.22 local time and we get a good view looking uh, across the, uh, the road and down into Portage Creek. See some of the islands in the middle of the, the estuary or, or inlet and uh, you see there's very little beach development. The trees and the vegetation goes right down to the water line.